why accessible pedestrian signals are essential for leading pedestrian intervals by Donna Sauerberger, Certified Orientation and Mobility Specialist, with videography by Paul Sauerberger, and in collaboration with Accessible Design for the Blind, Leading pedestrian intervals, where pedestrians get their walk intervals several seconds before the vehicles get their green interval, have been shown to dramatically reduce the conflicts between pedestrians and turning drivers. An example is shown here, where pedestrians are waiting to cross a street that is seven lanes wide. They get their walk signal indication now, and the vehicles get their green signal indication now seven seconds later. Giving pedestrians a head start makes the crossing much safer for all pedestrians who have access to the pedestrian signal. However, if the pedestrian signal is not made accessible by installation of an accessible pedestrian signal, leading pedestrian intervals can actually make the crossing more risky for blind people than it would be without it, because leading pedestrian intervals that are inaccessible often leave blind pedestrians with insufficient time to cross and make drivers less likely to yield to them. The reason for this is that when there is no access to the pedestrian signal, the only cue that blind people can use to determine the probable onset of the walk interval is the surge of the near lane parallel traffic, which is the traffic going straight in the lanes that are closest to the crosswalk. For example, when the parallel street is to their left, their cue to start crossing is when they hear at least one vehicle beside them going straight through the intersection, as shown here. And when the parallel street is to their right, they listen for those same vehicles coming toward them straight through the intersection, as shown here. So, let's see what happens at a crossing with a leading pedestrian interval when blind pedestrians have no access to the pedestrian signal and have to use the surge of the near lane parallel traffic as their cue to cross. The first problem is that in many situations, as is the case here, the walk signal indication has ended by the time the vehicles get their green signal indication. In those situations, blind pedestrians who walk the average speed of 4 feet per second and who don't start to cross until after the traffic starts to move won't have enough time to complete a crossing. For example, we see a woman with a white cane waiting with a parallel street on her left. The onset of the walk indication is now, but she continues to wait for her cue. The end of the walk indication and onset of the vehicular green are now, and now she hears the straight through parallel traffic surging forward and she starts to cross. The pedestrian clearance interval is finished now and she still has more lanes to cross. We see the same thing happen when she crosses back. The onset of the walk indication is now and two other pedestrians start to cross while she waits for her cue. The end of the walk indication is now, and now she hears her cue of the straight through parallel traffic and starts to cross, and so she's still in the crosswalk when her pedestrian clearance interval is finished. The second problem at crossings with a leading pedestrian interval for blind pedestrians who have no accessible pedestrian signal is that they often start their crossing alone long after most pedestrians started crossing and several seconds after the vehicles have started moving. Research indicates that drivers are less likely to yield to pedestrians who are crossing alone than they will for pedestrians who are crossing together. Here we see a right turning driver cut in front of the pedestrian even though she is walking with a white cane. This puts her at great risk and also delayed her crossing so that by the time the pedestrian clearance interval has finished, she still has four more lanes to cross. In this next example, one pedestrian crosses safely during the lead pedestrian interval and has no conflicts with the vehicles, but the pedestrian with the white cane doesn't start to cross until she hears her cue of the near lane parallel traffic start to move, and so a van cuts in front of her.
Bulls. For more information, contact Accessible Design for the Blind at www.accessforblind.org and check out the article, Leading Pedestrian Intervals at Urban Crosswalks, Effects on Safety for Travelers Who Are Blind, by Dr. Eugene Borkwin, Joey Beider, Dr. Rob Wall Emerson, and Lucas Frank, published in 2023 in the first issue of Volume 117 of the Journal of Visual Impairment and Blindness, pages 30 to 39.